know many of you are enjoying this interview series. Uh, first, with my uh, Spanish teacher. She's very frustrated because I don't do my homework and I can't really constant. I hate grammar. And by the way, I apologize on that video. I spelled grammar wrong, not once, but two or three times. How to spell it? Silly me. Sorry about that. Can I correct it? Not without a lot of major uh, hoops to go through, so it's just going to stand the way it is. And everybody in the future that watches it can just laugh and say what an idiot I am for misspelling it. I can deal with it. So this interview series, the interview itself was fascinating for me. To have people that go through what they went through, to take a year to go from the mountains of Nicaragua, through Colombia, around Medellin, Bogota, Bopajan, Ipialis, not only to go there, but to spend two weeks, three weeks, four weeks in various places. Everywhere they stopped, that they named in this, they spent time there getting to know people. Not just going to the, you know, El Centro of the city, but going around and looking at the different suburbs. Then they moved on to Ecuador and they spent time based on the list they get from uh, popular gringo uh, destinations why not right and so you know to go to uh, Cotacachi and Otavalo and spend time in Quito then Cuenca I met them in Cuenca they asked to get together for uh, coffee or lunch and and we spent a couple hours uh, there and they spent a number of weeks there, and then they went down to Loja, spent time there. And it's interesting, we have the same conclusion that it may be one of the best places in all of Ecuador for a variety of reasons, not least of which is better weather. And then they went to Vilcabamba, crossed the border into Peru. They went to all the hot spots in Peru and then some, went down, spent time in the Amazon, spent a day going down the Amazon River pretty fascinating stuff. Uh, what a lot of people just dream about, they're actually out doing it. And then they go to the border town of Brazil, Colombia, and Peru. That little uh, Leticia sits right there. And from there went out to other little towns and villages along the Amazon River. And then flew back to Medellin and Sabaneto and as they were here, they would send me messages here in Colombia. They would send me messages about, well, today we're in such and such a town and we're going to be here for a while. And, and they were, they hit more towns than I've ever seen. And they didn't, again, didn't just hit them. They spent time. They went to El Jardin and they stayed there for a week or so. It just everywhere they went, they spent enough time to get to understand it. Now, what was their purpose in all this? They wanted to find a new place to settle down. And seeing all these different countries and all these different cities, where did they decide to settle down? Well, they ended up choosing as their favorite place, Armenia, Colombia. Well, that's my feeling. Not to say that I didn't love being in Cuenca. I've said many times I really liked it there. Now it turns out I can't stay there long term, but I'm also a permanent resident of Ecuador and I can be gone for a number of years and return. I actually plan on going back January or February and spending some time with my friends back there, but I can't live in Cuenca. Is it possible in my future that I might go to a place like Loja? It's very possible. I just, I don't know. Right now, I'm extremely happy being in a place that I've known for a decade and a half and have always loved being here. And since I've been back, I feel great being here. So that's how it relates to me. But the interview with them, it was fascinating because in some ways it was like looking in the mirror. today 
And I don't know, there's a lot of footage left. It takes a while to, to edit these. And there's a lot of footage left. I'm not sure if it's going to be part five and six or just part five, but I really want to cut it down because as the interview went on, it became more conversational. And you hear enough of me, and I want it to be about them, so I have to keep cutting out where I would chime in and put my two cents. I don't know yet how it's going to end up, but really all that's left at this point are the reasons of why they chose Armenia. So I might be able to condense it down to just the last installment. Now, questions that I keep getting, when am I going to get out hit the streets and show more about Armenia itself? Well, it's going to be probably a week. It might be next week, Wednesday or Thursday, before I can get out and do it. I'm very busy on the personal front. I've been putting video videos up one and two a day for several weeks now. I've never put that many up before. And that represents a ton of it, most of my time in editing, which means a, a lot of my own personal things that I should do, need to do, want to do, have taken a, a, a far back seat, the third seat back there. And i got to bring them out. There's a lot of things I need to get done. I've got bills that I've got to pay, that if I don't get paid, they're going to start turning off things. And um, I've just been so focused on, you know, trying to get these uh, videos done for you. So I've got things that I've got to do. I've got some things that I will be announcing before Christmas that I think you'll be interested in. I've got a dilemma that I've got to face that I haven't figured out yet, and I probably will share that with you. So, you know, there's a lot going on on this end. I do want to mention, don't forget, it's Christmas time. What better time to go to the GoFundMe account and drop in some money, right? Just imagine, it's PBS. So I could do a fundraiser for the next week, right? Yeah. I've been getting some suggestions about some things people want to see in videos, and there's a theme that tends to be repeating, and I just tell you, I'm not going to do it. Uh, as I do things myself, some of those things may come to fruition. This is not a sprint. These are videos about me living here. I am not going to go out and make a concerted effort about how to get health care, how to choose health care. Um, how to do all these things, things that I don't even plan on doing. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I understand the need, the desire to know details about working through a government office for a permit, for a business, things like that, but I'm not doing that. So I'm really not going to go spend that time you know, trying to figure that out, research it. I mean, seriously, do I go into an office and tell them that I'm going to open a business that I'm not really going to open and go through the process and waste everybody's time? I mean, it's just not a practical thing to do. And frankly, I have no desire or motivation to do something that, that isn't going to be part of my life. These videos are my life, my experience in traveling and living in Ecuador and now in Colombia. Hence the name Grand Columbia. I don't have a fictitious business to open. I don't mean to be mean. Or I, I certainly don't mean to offend anybody, but I mean, you have to use some common sense. So when you make suggestions, you know, relate them to things that, you know, I'm going to do. And maybe it hasn't occurred to me to do such and such. Okay, time for lunch. We're going to check one. Okay, there's the uh, Park of Life, Armenia Hotel. Mokawa, but uh, this one is off the on a side road. Six thousand pesos. That's about a dollar ninety today, more or less. So let's go check it out. Okay, here we are. Just the next block down, and let's go see what we get.
Okay, something I'll say about the El Marzos or the lunch. Uh, just about everywhere you have your choice of beef, pork, or chicken. And sometimes you'll have your choice of uh, one or two types of fish. It's always vegetables. And uh, one thing I'll say about the pork is that um, they have an association, a national association of pork growers that really ensures some of the best quality uh, pork you can find. And juice today is mango, one of my favorites. So let's dig in. Now I had a good suggestion. I have no plans right now to do it, although it is possible, which is why I bring it up. Why don't I put um, Spanish subtitles on, on the videos? I would like to do that, but I can't really, it, it's difficult. And for me, I would never get any videos up. I would be, it, it, I, if I spend 10 hours on editing, I spend 50 hours on trying to do subtitles. It is possible that I might be able to get those done. Uh, somebody has volunteered to assist me on doing some video work. And if that actually comes to fruition, they're Spanish speaking. And so maybe it's something that can be done in the future. There is a way to open that up for the public to contribute subtitles, but I know a number of people personally that have tried to do that, and they have to constantly monitor it because people put up foul language and just nasty comments and trolling things because you opened it up. And I just don't, you know, I like a nice positive life, and I don't want to get down in the mud and wallow in that kind of stuff. So I don't know. It's something I'm considering. So, may or may not happen. But keep in mind, the videos are not for the people of Colombia. They're not for the people of Ecuador. These are for people that are considering visiting, vacationing, or living in these countries. That's who they're for, which means 95% of them are English speakers. Most are from the United States, although I have a, a pretty good crowd from Canada, from England, and from Australia. Uh, surprisingly so. Those are, those are the big countries that, that watch these videos. Now what else? We've got a mile mark. Of, we did pass 300 videos. Not counting the ones that YouTube have pulled down and ones that I have deleted for one reason or another over the past three years. We're up to 306. For me, that's a lot because, um, as you know, I kind of suck at this, so it takes me a while to get them done. So, breaking 300, that's a milestone for me. I'm almost to half a million views, and so that's... That's kind of a milestone for me. To me, that's a lot. Granted, I'm just a small time guy here. Uh, I know it. I have no delusions about that. But to have you know, almost a half a million people watching these videos, um, wow. That's the recap on the interviews. Stay tuned. It's what I'll be doing soon, walking around Armenia. So you, you'll see more of the highlights of Armenia. I will do a few practical things. I will insert now and then pricing. Don't forget your big Christmas fundraising for the channel. Christmas lights from the balcony. And some yip dog. Keep your suggestions coming. I hope I've given you a few parameters so you don't get the wrong expectation, but you know, please keep them coming. I do a lot of the suggestions that come my way. And last, I will be updating you on a few personal events that are in process or will be taking place over the next two weeks. By that time, we'll be rolling up to Christmas and maybe we'll be doing some kind of Christmas special. Holidays in Armenia, very similar to holidays in the United States. 
they're big on Halloween and dressing up and having parades. It's also huge on Christmas. I mean, the entire neighborhood I'm in is lit up, but everywhere you walk around the city, there's Christmas lights everywhere. There's Christmas trees everywhere. There's Christmas music playing in all the stores. Except for snow, there's not a lot to miss. Okay, back to the grind. I'll knock out that last interview or two, and then we'll get on to the rest of the show. We'll see you later.